Hello, welcome to the media pool. This is Umut Tugay, and in this video essay, I'll reflectively discuss viral video module in generally. While doing this, I'll also will draw on the theory I learned during the module and also my own experiences throughout two semesters. Well, mortals, the lonely ghost of the Waterhouse building was the first group project we've conducted. We chose to tell the story of the Waterhouse building and the practical value of the clinical skills learning zone by characterizing a ghost who dwells in that building for a really long time. According to Berger's contagious characteristic theory, there are six contagious characteristics that are coded as steps. Those are social currency, triggers, emotion, practical value, public and the stories. Our videos also employ some of them. The humor and the wit elements in The Lonely Ghost referring to social currency. Light-hearted animation and the jokes of Dr. Mortimer created that humorous outlook of the narrative. We use darker colors to evoke horror and also fast-paced music that signifies old silent comedy genre. A comedic style was born out of that contrast as well. Operation the board game kind of jokes. Also the general narrative style of the ghost, uh, as if it's a fragment from 80s animated comedy, evoked nostalgia, referring emotion in Berger's framework. And the video in overall used stories to make an arguably boring content fun. Moreover, since the inherent content of the brief we've taken has to deliver practical information about the clinical learning zone, our content also has practical value from the contagious characteristics. However, some of the planned nuances could not be delivered as planned due to the length restriction and also the client's intervention to the content. The ghost's voice was more ghostly before to make the audience uh, yeah, make the audience uh, engaged more into the story. And his name was Mortimer Watkins, not Dr. Thomas. He was talking in a gringo accent, just like me. And it was because of the long years he lived without uttering any word to anyone as a dead person. So it was already internalized into the story. There also was a musical part in the end of the uh, video that would last longer. But due to the formal restrictions, that kind of extra elements that had the potential to make the video more contagious could not contribute to the final version of the video. Still, the video did not bad in audience engagement as I expected. We have 336 views, 68 likes, 26 comments and 2 new subscribers for the channel so far. Seems like, even we couldn't produce exactly what we have planned, steps framework we wanted to involve, and also the social media campaign we've conducted, works well. When it comes to the second project, which is Notes from the Underground, our group did better in overall. Similarly, this video also used some of the Burgess steps framework. The bright orange color we chose to use evokes an uplifting feeling when it's combined with fast-paced motion graphic and the voiceover. The content employs social currency, as it has made for an NGO, and the way it delivers the content is novel for this genre. Also, the title of the video, which is referring to Dostoevsky's novel, is a cue that functions as a social currency. However, the most dominant contagious characteristic in the video are public and the practical value, since the main function of the video is to ask the audience to be a volunteer at the FOWT and deliver very practical information about the tunnels. The video does it via Google Earth footage and website screen recordings from the FOW's uh, website. Hence, it encourages the audience to interact with the content that also should be considered as a trigger concept, according to Berger. Moreover, we did not have a mod or mod script for the video. Instead, we had a guideline for volunteer Claire to answer the questions and script is molded together in cooperation with her. This improvisational headspace 
allows her to contribute directly into the content and I assert that her enthusiasm to the Friends of the Williamson Tunnels is reflected into the voiceover. That has conceived the emotion aspect of our video as a contagious characteristic. Since the video also talks about the historical background of the Williamson Tunnels and visualize the story that is being told by animation stories is another significant contagious characteristic that we used in our video. Thus, even it's only been a week since it's published, our video has reached 314 views, it also has 46 likes, 14 comments and driven one new subscriber to the channel, which is quite good in such a so short period of time. This semester, the viral video module was apparently different. To work with a team was something different in the creative process-wise. It had both advantages and disadvantages to work within a group. For example, Köyn and Lingwall's smart framework for social media objective was a practical and very useful strategy theory for social media campaigning that I had underestimated in the first semester. Due to that failure of mine, first semester, videos I've made had not done very well in the audience engagement wise. But uh, while working in a group, I've mostly undertaken idea finding, script writing and production related duties for both of the videos. Post-production and strategy was mostly planned by the other group members. And apparently their strategy in social media, especially referring to the smarts S for specific, that means to use Weibo or WeChat to reach the Chinese community in the University of Liverpool, has boosted the, our user engagement for both of the videos. Nevertheless, the Lonely Ghost was one of the hardest coursework I have ever done. Its, it's difficulty was coming from several aspects. First of all, the group itself, which was started to having problems even from the pre-production phase. That was not a problem related to individuals in the group, but stemmed from that, we could not exactly become a group at first. That was a group conceived by the model lecturer, not an authentic one. At first we didn't know about each other quite enough, and since each of us were third grades, we were already too busy in our routines. And probably that is why, as it's stated in Captain Bach and Smith's team type theory, our group remained as a working group, which means only could function to finish the assessment. Uh, it, it could not transcend its potential to be a higher and performing team, but arguably in some bits of the second project acted as a potential team, with approximately same team cohesion and performance impact ratio, but more integration and more motivation. The first problem we've encountered was the lack of a plan when it comes to the roles that each one in the group will undertake. So we ended up without any defined roles in the team. Partially that's why, and partially because I've taken initiative during both of the videos, I've ended up overloaded, found myself very frustrated time to time. That was during the norming process of the group work according to Tuckman and Jensen's theory. We also had some small communication issues in the group at the forming phase, when it comes to creative thinking and brainstorming. The fact that none of us was native speakers of English and excluding me, the rest of the group can speak Chinese, that partially affected the collective communication practices. But still, group members supported each other throughout the way. Other members understood the frustration I had with animation parts and worked hard to complete the other parts of the project, especially the paperwork, final cut editing and social media promotion. Besides, I was the only one who can make animations and motion graphics who has a professional video making history. That's why my group over trusted me in production. To establish a trust relationship in each other reinforced the group feeling. Those were the reasons for me to take initiative. Because I thought it would be quicker to do things as I used to do in my individual projects, rather than to be lost in translation and be drawn in excessive amount of ideas. Because during the production process, 
it's needed to make quick decisions and apply them straight away. It was hard, but fortunately worked. Moreover, for the Lonely Ghost video, the fact that the client was not a creative professional and not exactly aware of what to expect as an outcome has complicated the whole process. As it planned, during the pitch the client supposed to read both of the scripts, but probably they have not. At first, they had not chosen the more contagious script, which is totally fine since they are the client, but uh, that choice significantly made our job harder, because including the module leader and some of the client representatives, we were expecting to produce the first pitch, not the ghost one. Since we have not planned the ghost idea in detail, and it was nearly impossible to shoot a real live action ghost, it turned to a crisis in the group and I had to take initiative to make the video as an animation instead. So I had to revise the script, design the character and decide the environmental footage that we'll shoot during the production process. Also during the pitch, we've clearly emphasized that we need a volunteer to make the voiceover for the ghost, preferably someone who can speak in uh, English accent, but the client apparently ignored that will. So I used the camera on set, communicated with volunteers from the School of Madison, designed the character and in addition to those, voice acted for both of the characters and also animated the characters. This was obviously very much this was obviously much more work than I supposed to undertake and to be able to do them all, I sacrificed sleep for two days. As a result of that, I missed a submission deadline for another module. Despite this much of effort, the client rejected to publish the first version, the one that I was dubbing the ghost. They claimed that the accent was not understandable. During the pits, we've emphasized that we need a volunteer to do the voiceover though. Luckily, our model leader helped us with the voiceover and we could publish our video. And actually being a group saved life in this point. Since I already was quite tired and missed that deadline, my group mate Chen managed this crisis and arranged cooperation with the module leader. If I was working by myself in such a condition, probably I would have given up in that point to publish the video. So, even time to time it felt it has some disadvantageous aspects, being a group in overall was extended our individual potentials. Even it was very fun to involve in such a project and group work is the obstacles occurred, still uh, during the Lonely Ghost, very limited time span and unbalanced work division reduced the quality of the end product, I might say. In the second project, we functioned relatively better in overall, because we started to work in a more interesting brief with a significantly more flexible client that did not restrict us in creative wise. That was also because we started to know each other in the group and acted according to that. Still, because of the long process of motion graphic design, I ended up working on it during all my Easter holiday, as some of my group peers could go for short vacations. That also has some aspects to do with my personal failure of time management, that is something I need to improve but animation work, of course, has affected. Finally, in the end, we had a decent motion graphic video at least. I would only criticize the sound design and soundtrack, since those aspects of the video can be improved. However, it's still functional as it is. If we had more time to commit for that project, I'm sure that we could have done better. After two semester long of viral video module, throughout three individual and two collective video projects, I might say that I learned plenty of new skills. And also I revisited some of my former knowledge about video making, working with a client, YouTube as a media hub and online broadcasting in general. I already was producing for YouTube before I started the module, but to engage with the academic theory related to YouTube was something new for me and it was totally horizon expanding. I've developed a novel and very practical understanding related to analyzing and interpreting YouTube analytics, and also developed more efficient social media plans. 
learned to make a production plan and earned the ability to manage possible crises that occurs on the way. To conclude, during two semesters, I've enjoyed and learned about the viral video. Thanks for my model conductor and also my classmates, but especially to my group mates. That is the very last video I'm submitting to the media pool. But if you guys would like to keep in touch, you can subscribe my personal channel as well. That's been me, Umut, and thanks for watching.